Hello, Margaret here from Botany Bay Imports. Today we will be doing another session in Groomopedia talk. Today we have Sue Wright joining us. For those that don't know Sue, let's find out a bit about her. Hello, Sue. Hi, Margaret. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's very exciting. You are welcome. More than welcome. It will be interesting to hear a bit about you. So let's let's kick off and find out who are you. Sure. Well, my name's Sue Wright. I'm fr originally from the UK. Um, emigrated to Australia uh, about 16 years ago. Um, diploma certified pet groomer, and I'm living in Queensland now. I'm a diploma certified pet groomer. Founder of the Australian Pet Groomers Group, a Facebook group that I started 10 years ago and now has over 4,000 members. And the Australian model dog team leader, IGA judge, and also a brand ambassador for Opaws. Why did you become mm -hmm. a groomer, Sue? Um, well, I all, it's strange because I always wanted to be sort of an artist, something creative, a designer. Yeah. Um, and after we emigrated to Australia, my husband said, let's buy a business that you can work in, that you can enjoy. So we headed off down to the um, business brokers and we went to view three businesses. One was a florist, one was a pet groomer, and one was a bead making workshop. workshop. So they were all kind of creative. Yeah. Um, I've done a HMD course, which is like a poor man's uh, degree at art school back in the UK. So I knew that I could turn my hand to most things, but I've never ever done pet grooming. Yeah. And when we went around the businesses, the pet grooming salon was probably the most run down. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it held the most potential uh, because I could see myself doing the salon up and making it look pretty. And the dogs didn't look particularly fantastic. I know it's kind of typical of what people say, you know, you think you're going to play with fluffy dogs all day and make them look gorgeous. And this lady said she could teach me in, in a week or two. So I thought, great, I'll do that. <laughs> of course, it wasn't that easy. It yeah. was hard work. Um, the lady who was going to train me left after a week, oh, and I was wow. kind of there on my own thinking, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> thought like how you got into the Asian fusion side of things did you have an interest in art and stuff like that so obviously that yeah. tells us a bit more which is great absolutely that and that's where my passion really is um I class myself as a pet stylist yeah I'm passionate about pet styling but I'm always trying to make the pets look cuter um and I think Asian styling does that yeah so most pet owners are, are pleased for you to do that to their animals, but I don't call it Asian styling to my owners, to my, to my clients, because they don't understand okay. um, the technical side of it. I'll just say, can we make your pet look cuter? Are you, you know, what, what are you up for? What do you want to achieve from this style? So that kind of led me down the um, Asian styling route. Um, plus, back when I first had my very first salon, I used to um, sell... Papier harnesses. Do you remember the papier harnesses? I'm not sure if they're still going. Mm, no, I don't um, remember. Yeah, but they were they were made in China and they would send out magazines and they had all these gorgeous groomed dogs in there and they were all in Asian style with the flared legs and the really cute oval muzzles and and I was obsessed about these mm. dogs in these magazines because you didn't see that yeah. when I first started. Yeah. Um, so I would obsess over these dogs and, and say to my clients, come have a go at this. I had no idea what I was doing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you've done very well, though. Like, very well. <laughs> I, was just, I was just winging it. Well, just emulate what I can see in this picture. And, yeah, I was, I was very lucky, I think, because I was probably one of the first people in Australia to, to really delve deep into Asian styling. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, um. So I'm still learning now, 15 years later, and I'm still going to seminars and I'm still learning. And and I love that aspect about it because that keeps this job fresh yeah. and interesting. And yeah, 
you know, I'm still passionate today about what I do. That's great. How, how did you find networking with other groomers? I love the networking side of it. I think because um, a lot of us groomers work alone. There's a lot of people who work in trailers or small salons and they just work alone. Um, that isolation can be difficult, but I think if you delve into networking, if you join classes, if you go to seminars, you go to events, it's a small industry and you soon get to meet people and you meet the same people and you meet the newcomers and it's, it's just great. I love networking, definitely. I, I would highly recommend anybody who hasn't tried it, who's, who's working alone especially, get into some networking events because it'll really lift your spirits and it'll enhance your grooming and you'll create some great lifelong friends as well. Perfect. Um, can I just ask, have you been back to the UK since you've been to Australia? I actually haven't. Okay. Um, I only have one sister in the UK, so that's the only relative I've got in the UK. Lee has family there. Yeah. Uh, but my parents moved out to Australia about two years after we did. They came for a holiday and um, stayed. <laughs> more or less decided there and then that they wanted to stay and applied for the visas so oh, they, okay. they ended up moving in with us and they stayed so that's so, good because <laughs> yeah. uh, I was just wondering like if when if you ever did go back like what what do you notice difference in salons here versus over there but that's cool we see it all online anyway <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah it's funny because I'm, I'm friends with a lot of the UK um groomers online as well yeah and it's nice to keep in contact with them and see how the country's changing and what they're doing it, it's especially bad at the moment unfortunately because of the pandemic yeah. a lot of them are, uh, are struggling through the pandemic yeah yeah um, what what made you attend seminars sue the i think the very first seminar i went to was surprise surprise an Asian styling seminar. <laughs> <laughs> Rio Kikuchi had come over from Japan, oh, yeah. and um, yeah, and I got told about the seminar, and I was because sign me up. <laughs> How do I get there? And uh, yeah, and I enjoyed it so much. I've attended seminars since, not necessarily Asian styling, but um, whenever I've got the opportunity, I've uh, I've been to seminars. So it's, it's just a great way to, to learn, to get up close and personal and see how other, other groomers operate in style. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, are, what are some of your achievements? I'm sorry, say again? What are some of your achievements? Some of my achievements? Oh, do you know, I have been so blessed. I've been so lucky in this industry. Um, I've not really sought out anything in particular, but people have always invited me to do things which is is always very flattering and um, i've made videos training videos for the i groom pub in australia training videos for um an international company in canada um, i've had my work um published in books magazines worldwide in france oh, wow. in america um in japan yeah, so it's been really, really cool. Wow, I didn't I've know. I've been that. really blessed. I was going to say, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, what about your first experience in the grooming ring? Oh, my... Do you know, it took me a few years to get to the grooming ring. It didn't really... Well, it's not that it didn't appeal to me, because it did, because I am competitive. But I'm also, believe it or not, I'm quite, I'm quite shy. So I really thought that the pressure would be on in the grooming ring and I would just crumble. But when I finally got the courage up, I went to a PIAA event on the Gold Coast and it was Terry De Marino was judging. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I entered Open because I'd never entered a competition before. And uh, Open Freestyle and I styled my Maltese Cross Shih Tzu into a, uh, into a Schnauzer. And we got first place, and we got best in group, and we ended up in the in the lineup for best in show. So that was like my first trip out in a grooming competition, and that was like, wow, that's pretty cool. It is. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So which which breeds do you cover in particular? Any anything special or? I have a few favourites. I like um, I like Grimmin Schnauzers and Airedales. Um, obviously, I like Grimmin Poodles, but more so in Asian style. Um, back to the Asian again. But I love doing Poodles and Bichons in the Asian style. Yeah. Um, what risks have you made as a groomer, Sue? Risks? Well, oh, I think the. Um, the biggest risk I did was organising the pet groomers cruise, which we've been running for a few years now. Um, a good friend of mine, Lisa Levy from the um, from America, was telling me about um, groomers cruises that they had over in America, over in the states. Yeah. And I thought, what a great idea! You know, we can network, we can socialise, and we can do some uh, seminars on board. And we'd not really done it in Australia, to my knowledge, at that point. So I contacted um, the cruise companies and had a chat to them. And it was a big risk because they wanted me to commit to 30 cabins. And I didn't know if uh, we could even sell 30 cabins. Um, But we did. And it was a huge success. And we've gone on and we've done three now. So... um, Unfortunately, we have to cancel this year's, yeah. but hopefully when the pandemic's over, we'll, we will be back bigger and better. It's a great social event, and everybody seems to enjoy it. Yeah, it, it looks good when I see things on social media. Um, yeah, one day it, it is. It's a lot of fun, and a lot of these girls, uh, well, well, and men, have, um, have made lifelong friends from the yeah. cruise as well, and they look forward to the next one. And yeah, yeah. So it's great. It's good. It's really great. It's good to um, interact with others and get to know people in your area or else, you know, in other states and stuff. So you've always got mm. to contact. Definitely, definitely. And it's nice because once you get to know these people, if you're having an, even a bad day, you can call them up and say, oh, my goodness, I'm having a bad day, and they understand. Or, if, <laughs> you know, if you're struggling with a dog. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what are some of your success stories, Sue? Um, I think oh. the biggest one, the biggest one to date probably is being chosen to be a contestant on Pooch Perfect last year. Yeah. So apparently they had um, over 4,000 groomers apply. Oh, wow. And I think just to be chosen was, you know, fantastic. And what a great experience to be on national TV, prime time, with... Um, Hollywood superstar Rebel Wilson. That was it yeah. was great. Yeah. All the groomers on on the show were amazing. They were fantastic, and I think I've made lifelong friends with those people as well. Yeah, I, I was part of the audience twice, so I, I really enjoyed watching what I did see at the time. Um, yeah, and I think all of you did a fantastic job. It was a great atmosphere. Hey, everybody was uh, yeah. everybody was having a blast. That's right. Challenging. Yes. It was challenging at times, yes. but uh, but it was a great opportunity. It really was. Yes. Um, congratulations on that. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, so who 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 is your worldwide mentor? Okay. Um, I think back to the early days, and we're talking fifteen years ago, and. I bought this grooming salon. I had no idea what I was doing. <coughs> the lady who was training me left. Uh, she, <coughs> excuse me. The lady who was training me left. She rang up after a week and said, I'm sorry, I'm not coming back. You're on your own. So there I am, completely green. Um, and I have to learn grooming <laughs> from where. Mm. So... I couldn't find a grooming school locally. I couldn't find somebody to teach me. There wasn't a lot of groomers around. I did um, contact one or two, but they weren't interested in helping. Um, So I turned to videos. And I had a lady working with me who did baths, blow dries, and poodle points. And that's all she did. So I promoted her to head groomer. (laughs) I watched Sue Zecco and Jay Scruggs, uh, Jay Scruggs, super styling session videos yeah. and I would relay back to my 
my bathing lady how to style these dogs and that's basically what we did for about the first six months it was hilarious wow and the best part of it was people were coming and saying wow that's the best haircut they've ever had yeah that's (laughs) awesome too (laughs) crazy crazy time yeah um i've learned a lot since those days but those i mean they obviously don't know that um they were who who were mentoring me but um but yeah i was just yeah blown away by their skills and their teaching skills and, and i learned a lot from from those guys but nowadays um back to the asian style is the course and um, i'm a big fan of valerie ku she does some amazing online classes i went out to china last year um, to see Laylee at the Baby House Grooming School in China, and she was fantastic. So she's um, one of my worldwide mentors as well. Is that the lady, so, is that, the lady that came here once as well? Or? What was that, sorry? Did she come here once as well? Laylee, she did. Yeah, she was in Brisbane a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, she's a fantastic stylist. Her, her skills are just mind-blowing. They're the level of perfection is second to none. I went out there and I thought I'd done an okay job and um, their teachers would come over and say, so, um, have you finished? How happy are you with, with the work that you've achieved? You know, we've styled a nice little poodle in a little peanut head and he's got a beautiful Asian muzzle. And I kind of looked and thought, huh, that means it's not finished. <laughs> and I thought it was great. So I was like, oh, 80%? And she's like, no, not eighty percent. Probably more like fifty. We'll keep working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good because it does it does train your eye for detail. It does. And I think you need that with the Asian styling. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you got any tips for um, beginner groomers who are starting out? Yeah, definitely. I would I would say. Compete if you get the opportunity. That's a great way to learn. Um, I mean, you don't have to go in there thinking, I need to win, I need to be best in the show. Just go. Network. Do the best groom that you can do and absorb the critique that you get from the judge because that will help you come on leaps and bounds. Um, I suppose, as it's difficult now to get to um, shows and, and things, probably... Learn online, keep learning, attend seminars, watch videos and ask questions, join groomers groups and and don't be afraid to ask. You know, we were all new once, but we can all still keep learning. Like I say, even now, 15 years later, I'm I'm still learning and, and I think we never stop learning. So don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, learning is definitely the key. That's right. Plenty of groomers there that have had a lot of experience, knowledge that can mm-hmm. always help out. Um, and, and so many people nowadays are happy to help. I know years ago, the groomers tended to keep themselves to themselves, whereas now people are much more free with their, um, with sharing their skills and their expertise. And, you know, most people want to see you do well. They want to see you achieve. Yeah. They don't want to drag you down. So, so ask, you know, yeah. don't, be, don't be scared to ask. Yeah, and I think social media is a, a good thing for that as well. Like, uh, whereas yeah. 15 years ago, say you had none of none of this social stuff. So, absolutely, yeah, yeah it was just you, you were learning what you could, where you could from videos, and yeah. well, that was it. Basically, videos, I think. That's right. So yeah, we're totally spoiled now, and the equipment's come so far as well, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. We're so blessed now with such as the wide blades that. Yeah you provide us all with which is fantastic yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are they're a godsend yeah so, um, there's, so, there's so much equipment out there now that's that's changed that that's there to help us to make our job easier yeah yeah um, anything else you want to say or is that all really i think we've i think that's it. it but i would yeah. like to say again thank you so much for inviting me it's, it's welcome. been a pleasure and uh, yeah, and I'm always happy to help. If anybody wants to whiz me a message on Facebook, if I can help them, I'll help them. Okay, perfect. Thanks for your time today, Sue. I hope all the Thanks. listeners enjoy hearing Sue's story. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, Sue. Bye. Bye bye.